They say that this route is a benchmark in alpinism. Many alpinists, they want to test themselves against this benchmark to test that they are able to climb at this level. It is graded as extremely hard. On the one hand side, because of the technical difficulties and on the other hand, because of the scarce protection points. A north face like this is not a place to be stuck in the cold waiting for other teams. There were an average of eight people climbing it every day on weekdays and I feared the weekend it would be even more crowded. The Saturday we went, we were 14 people. That is far too many for this route, especially for the danger of falling ice. This route in the north face of Eguil de Pelerin is hardly ever in conditions. Years and years can pass by unclimbable. I think it wasn't in conditions in the last seven years. It's a kind of a dream of every alpinist to be here. I never thought I will be at the stage to actually be here. They say that it's a, it's a test. Uh, I mean, I'm happy just being here. Uh, we have the level, so no, it's not a big problem. I have the gear, you have the muscle, I think. <laughs> <laughs> It needs a thin layer of ice attached to the vertical wall. This only happens under very specific meteorological circumstances. Cold, but not too cold. Wet, but not too wet. Snow, but no wind. And the significant temperature contrast between the day and the night. All of these sustained during several weeks to create a thin layer of ice. The fall of 2019 was significantly bad in terms of weather. It snowed very often, but generally combined with a strong winds. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get notifications when new videos get published. So, we did two pitches in one. Yeah, very quickly. I think the conditions look amazing. It's thin ice with a soft layer of snow, but looks okay. It's a lot of parties though you see up there and those are the first two groups they are in the on the crooks so we're gonna have a, a break here have a so chill out yeah let's chill out <laughs> the north faces did not get a good snow cover in december the bad weather continued but for about 10 days the wind stopped blowing it didn't take long for the first local alpinist to give it a try climb it and for the news to spread all around. There was no time to wait. These conditions could last only a handful of days. I could sense the now or never feeling from many of my colleagues and that was contagious. When the sun started shining again, we could see from Chamonix town with our own bare eyes, a nice white line going from the bottom all the way to the summit. Fully concentrated, full of adrenaline, we quickly arrived at the two cracks pitches famous diedra, which can be seen from Chamonix. That was scary. That was almost 30 meters unprotected. That, all of that, where he is, that was the light ice screw I managed to put. And then above, that's the crux. Benjamin climbed it easily and I followed after. The conditions were fantastic. A thin layer of ice, thick enough to climb comfortably without having to use the rock. Quickly, the teams started arriving at the crooks and they started generating a traffic jam. We lost about two hours waiting. 
These two hours, they are in fact two hours less we had to climb before it got dark. In winter, this is important because the days are short. We had assumed it might get dark by the time we get to the summit, so we were prepared. We took it easy and we kept climbing smoothly. The second pitch was harder mentally. It was steep and delicate, but it didn't feel technically very hard. Although there was nothing to protect. So engaged, so scary, don't look down. We have to be very comfortable climbing at this level because falling is not an option. Afterwards, the route keeps going on a similar difficulty, slightly easier, very sustained, all the way to the summit. We entered in an automatic mode. We would just keep climbing without much thinking. Just keep going nicely. The teams would start to spread, giving us the space to climb non-stop. Soon, we started crossing the teams that they were already descending. Those were the first teams that didn't make it to the summit. They bailed three pitches from the top. In fact, we ended up being the only team that made it to the summit that day. Everybody else descended where the route crosses Rebufa Terre. When we reached this crossing, we understood why. The last three pitches of the original Beyond Good and Evil were completely dry. The exit via Rebufa Terre was in limit conditions, but possible. These last pitches were fantastic. Steep, technical, with good protection points. The sun set as I was climbing the last pitch. I had a look at the topo to make sure of the description, which said delicate, exposed, doubtful rock and suspended anchor. What a combo. Last rappel to go and the rope got stuck. The, it's a stack just below us, so I'm going down, you know, I'm rappelling only on the blue. As I get to the, to the knot, I will release it. Wish me good luck. Yeah, you need, you need luck. What a gorgeous finish.